What's up guys, RGT85 here, and admittedly, this was not the plan for this video originally. The original plan for this video was to play this game for like a half hour this morning, show you guys some gameplay of it, show you guys how it ran on the Nintendo Switch, talk over the gameplay a little bit, and then just sort of be done with it. Because if you know my history with RPGs, I always thought Final Fantasy VII was a good game. I always thought it was a really good RPG, but I never felt it was one of the greatest of all time. And a lot of people give me flack on that, because obviously this is revered by many people to be one of the best RPGs of all time. And I always thought maybe that had something to do with nostalgia because they really enjoyed the game as a kid. And looking back to when I played this game over 20 years ago with my best friend Compton at the time, we used to play a lot of RPGs, whether you're talking about stuff like Brigandine, whether you're talking about stuff like Star Ocean or um, Grand Stream Saga, Shining Force 3. We played a lot of RPGs and Final Fantasy 7 was one of the games that we played together. I remember he picked it up and we played it over at his house on his place station one we beat the game we would take turns playing it and i always thought it was a good game but i didn't think i didn't think it was a great game so going into this i obviously knew that final fantasy 7 being on the nintendo switch is a big deal when you look at the history between squaresoft and nintendo of course their partnership was huge on the super nintendo and then when nintendo decided to do cartridges on the n64 that really hurt their partnership there of course was that little demo reel of a final fantasy style game running on the uh, nintendo 64 at the time but then it ended up moving to the PlayStation, and then the rest is pretty much history. Of course, the PlayStation had some of the greatest RPGs of all time coming to us from Squaresoft, and Final Fantasy VII was always considered one of them. So like I said, I planned on buying this, I just wanted to show you guys how it looked and how it played, but as you can see by my time played so far, I've been playing for about two and a half hours this morning, and I feel like I may have been a bit wrong about this game. Um, it, it, it pains me, it pains me to say it because it's always been one of the staples of this channel that Final Fantasy VII is not one of the greatest RPGs of all time, but maybe I just didn't understand things and maybe my palette has changed for RPGs. I usually enjoy more action RPGs nowadays, but playing Final Fantasy VII this morning for you know two and a half hours, I've just been absolutely enthralled with it. I just did the part where you basically have to dress up Cloud as a girl, minor spoilers, in order to save Tifa from this lair, from this creepy Don guy who's basically like a pimp or something like that. And I feel like maybe I just didn't understand the story as much as a kid because there's so much funny writing that I've encountered with this and I'm just chuckling to myself. I'm like, oh wow, you know, I can't believe they had like a brothel in a Final Fantasy game that was, you know, so early on in the game and like kids were playing this stuff. Maybe I didn't understand things like this, but I don't know. I just, and man, let, let's just look at the game itself so as you can see this is Final Fantasy 7 now the backgrounds and everything remain the same they have that digitized look to them with the pre-positioned cameras but all of the character models have been done in a high resolution one thing I really like about Final Fantasy 7 on the switch is you could do this mode here by clicking in the um, left stick that does times three mode and basically it just speeds everything up because all of the battles in this game are of course random and at the time you know you didn't really see many characters on battlefields when you were ba basically battling enemies you would just get these random encounters so it kind of helps speed those along and I, I'm actually really enjoying that aspect of the game because it's just making it a bit faster to me and you know I'm able to run through these areas a bit quicker so you know the game itself looks looks pretty good they didn't do anything with the cutscenes or anything like that it's pretty much a replication of the version that came out on Steam a few years ago but you can even do it in the battles so right now we have times three going on in the battles so you can see everything is just nice and quick and crisp and as far as how the battles are going which is good because you know some of these battles don't really require that much strategy you're just pretty much just pressing the button to get through them because it's just a random battle but I will slow it down and show you guys a battle at normal speed because of course there's going to be a million different battles that you will encounter in this game so as you can see I'm leveling up all my characters yes I do know what happens to Ares you know everyone knows what happens to Ares it's it's very tragic but you know it is part of the game so let's take off the times three here and you guys can see sort of how everything looks and you can see the character models and stuff they actually look really good like I, I really like how clean and crisp they look it obviously still looks like an original PlayStation game but I feel like the textures are much better it's almost like it's running on an emulator of sorts when you're talking about um, the graphics of the game I do wish they would have messed with the cutscenes a little bit um, they do look a bit out of you know a bit old looking but you know it's still it's still a solid looking game it still definitely looks good enough 
And, you know, playing it in um, handheld mode, it still looks great. That's how I started playing it this morning when I was laying in bed. I just wanted to get to, you know, a certain point and then just start talking about the game and just showing you guys some gameplay. But I honestly feel like I, I might have been wrong about this game because I I just keep wanting to play it more and more. It's like I have other things I want to do. There's other games coming out today I wanted to check out, but this is just taking all of my time. I'm invested in the story. I'm invested in the world of Midgar. I'm invested in all of these things going on. And, you know, I remember the key story elements, you know, the plot twists and things like that, but I don't remember a lot of the smaller things when it comes to the story of the game. And I feel like that is what's really sort of driving me in. Um, just to show you guys some other things that are going on here. So you have your items, of course, that you use. Um, let's just go ahead and heal some people real quick. Um, you have a variety of different items. You have a variety of different weapons. If you're not familiar with Final Fantasy VII, you basically have Materia as well, which you come across and you can equip it into your weapons and your um, your secondary stuff. That basically give them better abilities. You can um, add different abilities, increase magic attacks, and things of that nature. There is some minor configurations that you can do with the game. Um, you can have different things with the cursors. You can change the battle speed, the battle messages, the field messages, the camera angles, and how the magic magic order works. Basic stuff here, nothing really incorporated, especially for the Nintendo Switch version of the game, but you know, it is worth, you know, showing off. Of course, you also have your limit breakers when you get to, when you basically, your character gets hit a bunch of times, the limit meter break, uh, builds up, and then you can do a big special attack that will take out a lot of different enemies. But other than that, there's nothing really unique or special about this version of the game, except one other thing that I will show you guys real quick. One of the things that was kind of difficult about the game is that you know knowing where to go because a lot of the areas look very similar it's hard to differentiate you know where doors and stuff are um, for that nature but I'll show you guys real quick once we get past this scene right here I'm a very fast reader you can hit the um, minus button and it'll basically show you different areas you can go to so we can go to where we just were to go back into the sewer or if we want to advance we can go to this green area and basically that is the way up so you know the backgrounds and stuff it, it, it is very helpful in figuring out where you want to go because like i said you know the backgrounds and stuff do look a bit dated still i i wish they would have done maybe a little something with it i can understand why they didn't because there are some instances where there's like where we just were in the sewers there, of course, was running water, so you can't really do that much with it. But I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I'm liking the game more than I should. And I, I feel like I feel like I was wrong about this game. Maybe looking back at my RPG history, the games that I liked during that time never really had a sort of modern or a futuristic setting. They were all sort of, you know, done in the past. Games like Shining Force 3, games like Brigandine. They were all sort of like, you know, if you had to pick a time period, maybe like the 1800s or early 1900s, maybe I just didn't appreciate futuristic stuff because I really liked Final Fantasy VIII on the um, PlayStation 1. I thought that was a really good game. But maybe maybe I did, just didn't appreciate the setting and the, the story and the, the real world sort of stuff that they incorporated in this game because now I'm, I'm really liking it. I'm really liking it and it's like, oh man, I don't like to be wrong. Nobody, nobody likes to be wrong. Everyone wants to be right all the time. And you know, people think, oh, you just made this video just to get views or whatever. It's like, no, I, I genuinely feel like I misrepresented this game for many, many years. And maybe I just didn't appreciate it at the time when I was a kid. Um, maybe I was just, you know, I just liked a different style of RPG. Oh, that's kind of clunky. A little clipping there it wasn't too bad but you know maybe i just didn't appreciate it at the time and now i'm able to appreciate games like this more so and i'll you know it is a bit dated the movement you can move with the analog stick which is a constant run or you can use the d-pad which is the slower style and hold the button down but i do like the fact that you can just use the analog stick to run around it saves a lot of time and i like the little the little time saving stuff like let's go ahead and just hit this times three thing you know get through this battle really quick take out these enemies and then we are good to go moving on and progressing oh this little guy these little guys are trying to be tough with me here I don't, I don't like that. Whoa. We're hurting a little bit. Tifa, Tifa's not feeling too good. All right. That was dumb. Let's go. Okay. There we go. 
<laughs> that battle that battle didn't go very well for me but at least tifa had leveled up so let's go ahead and use i actually have a high potion i can use but yeah like i just i feel like this game is better than i gave it credit for do i think it's one of the best rpgs of all time i i think i still need to keep playing it some more i i need to you know explore the game some more probably finish the game in order to see if i really really feel that way still but it definitely is a lot better than i've been giving it credit for all these years it's it's just very fun you know it's it's a good story it's a very mature story there's lots of elements of things that i wouldn't expect there to be in the game but it's there and that's what makes it really cool i know there's a boss battle up here i'm just trying to get to this boss battle real quick so i can show you guys how that looks and yeah i mean i i think you've got a general idea of of how i'm feeling about final fantasy 7 on the switch it is 17 dollars, i believe so if you you know that's not a bad price honestly it's it's pretty decent um i have no regrets about buying it my only regret is probably that i did not play it sooner and that i you know that i played it you know i beat it i liked it at the time but i never gave it a second chance i never revisited it to see you know maybe maybe i was missing something maybe maybe there was more to this game because i honestly feel like th there is more and it, it really is a great game but you know i don't want this video to go on too long um with me just sort of gushing about the game so that is a look at final fantasy 7 on the nintendo switch I was wrong about the game. It is a great RPG, fantastic game. Um, I highly suggest you guys check it out if you like RPGs. It's definitely running great on the Switch. It looks great, it plays great, whether you're playing it in dock mode or handheld mode. And yeah, so let me know in the comments section down below if you have always felt Final Fantasy VII was one of the best RPGs of all time and I've just been an idiot this entire time. And as always guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel. I'm going to be taking a look at Power Rangers either today, later tonight, or tomorrow on the channel as well because that's another game. You know, that's another thing from my childhood that I really enjoyed. And a Power Rangers fighting game, well, that just sounds kick-ass. But that's if I can pull myself away from Final Fantasy VII. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.